Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Cox, Battalion Chief and Information Officer with CAL FIRE. Uh, welcome to the CAR press conference. Just a few things. Firstly, uh, for all cameras here, please include the sign language uh, interpreters in all of your shots. Uh, secondly, please silence any cell phones right now and take any conversations outside if possible. Uh, and thirdly, we will have a moment for question and answers after the formal speakers. With that, I'll turn it over to the sheriff. Good morning, Tom Basenko, Shasta County Sheriff, Director of Emergency Services for Region 3. I'd like to welcome Madam Secretary Nielsen to this incident and thank you very much for the visit. Uh, we've had a little bit of an update. We've uh, decreased our law enforcement mutual aid services. We've nearly repopulated most of the areas affected by the fire. There's still some remaining. And then we had some fires pop up in the eastern county and also in the northern part of the county that added to some of the uh, fire activity. The uh, law enforcement mutual aid folks and my staff did a great job of keeping our neighborhoods safe and made a few arrests as a result of people coming into evacuation areas and also looting. Early on, we've already started the recovery process and we've been assisted by the Office of Emergency Services from the state and from FEMA. We've established a local assistance center and that is now combined with the Disaster Recovery Center and that's located at the old Kmart building at 2685 Hilltop Drive. There's a number of services there both from state, local and federal. FEMA is there as well. And volunteer services and nonprofits to assist the victims of the fire in this recovery effort and removal of debris. This allows a streamlined recovery process and centralized location for services and also many of the insurance companies are there with their mobile uh, offices to assist their customers as well. Uh, as I said earlier, the reentry and repopulation of the majority of the areas in the county has been completed. We have worked and stressed working closely with our fire partners and the utility partners. Safety is first and foremost, not only for the folks working in those areas, but for the citizens returning to those areas. The volunteer groups are coordinating with the Salvation Army and those include some are the Samaritan's Purse, a faith-based organization operating out of Reading Christian Fellowship, Churches for Christ on Alta Mesa, and Anderson Church of Christ, and then Team Rubicon, which is uh, formed by veterans and assists also in the debris cleanup and some of the recovery for them. But I'm very proud of the men and women of law enforcement that have assisted us during this uh, difficult and disastrous time. And also like to thank the California National Guard for their assistance as well and resource support and other assistance they offered as well. Their quick action of uh, evacuations early on led to saving lives. This time I'd like to turn it over to, Calif uh, to Cal Fire Chief uh, Ken Pimlot. Thank you, Sheriff. So it's been almost three weeks uh, here in Shasta County uh, with the car fire and uh, Amazing progress has been made against uh, some very challenging uh, fire and, and weather conditions. This morning, you know, the fire is 181,496 uh, acres, but 51% contained. Uh, a lot of work has gone on to make that happen. But we continue to be in critical fire weather conditions throughout California. A red flag fire weather warning continues to be in place for much of Northern California through late Saturday night. This means continued very dry temperatures, uh, very dry conditions, high temperatures, uh, and high winds. We, as the sheriff said, had additional new fires start yesterday here uh, in Shasta County, as well as around the rest of California. As we speak, there are uh, 30,000 firefighters deployed to fires throughout the Western United States. 13,500 of those are deployed right here uh, in California. We've burned over 671,000 acres just th since this fire siege began uh, several weeks ago. So we continue to move resources. We continue to prepare for the next events. We have uh, resources from all over the country helping us here in California. We also have resources, firefighters from Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we are working very close with our partners at the California National Guard, but also federal military assets. There will be additional crews coming into California within the coming week. Vigilance, vigilance, vigilance is what we're saying. We are nearly the middle of fire season. We have a long way to go. We have critically dry conditions. Firefighters are out there every day working to protect 
everyone in the state, we need everyone in the state to have a heads up how critical conditions are, pay close attention, follow websites, follow social media, pay very critical, um, close uh, attention to information that's flowing out, not only on existing incidents, but the potential for new existence with this kind of weather. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the Director of the California Office of Emergency Services, Mark Ghilarducci. Thanks, Chief Pemlot. Well, you've heard it from both Sheriff Pasenko and, and Chief Pemlot. Uh, we are still in this very significant fight, and this has, continues to be an all-hands-on-deck, one-team, one-fight effort, local, state, federal, private, non-governmental. Uh, everyone coming together, uh, not just here, but throughout the state. Um, concurrently, while the fire activity is still being dealt with, we are not waiting. We are um, aggressively working to begin the recovery process here on the car fire in the city of Reading. Uh, by next Tuesday, uh, we will have Department of Toxic Subject Control uh, units. These are hazmat units uh, on in Reading and beginning the process of removing household hazardous waste uh, from the various properties. And following that effort and we clean those properties up, um, our plan is by no later than the end of August, 1st of September, to actually have the debris clearance teams on the ground and begin the process of clearing each of these um, properties so that we can get the rebuilding going, get people's lives back up online. In that effort to do that, even from the beginning of the fire start, we have partnered very closely with our partners uh, at FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security. They have been with us every step of the way, uh, whether providing us a, a special fire management assistance grants uh, or uh, direct federal assistance from, for equipment and resources. Uh, and ultimately, um, um, at the request of the governor, the president uh, declaring a major disaster for the car fire. Um, that has been uh, exceptional support and resources, and, uh, and, and we're very appreciative of that. Uh, we'll continue to work together in a collaborative effort. Uh, the sheriff mentioned the, the local assistance center, which will continue to be open, and those programs will, will continue to expand throughout the region and um, will continue to make sure that all of you uh, get um, uh, access to all of the eligible programs that could help you in your individual need. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm particularly appreciative today, uh, Secretary Nielsen, Department of Homeland Security, here on the ground, um, seeing the uh, fire damage firsthand, uh, meeting with the responders and getting a good context as to the complexity of this event and the events that are facing California. Uh, so with that, um, it is really an honor and, and a pr privilege to introduce uh, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nelson. Secretary. Well, good afternoon. And I wanna thank everyone here. Uh, this is an important opportunity uh, for the folks behind me to give you an update. Uh, and I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, talking to the citizens on ways they can prepare. There are too many people uh, to thank, but I do want to, of course, thank uh, California Fire, California OES, the National Guard. I've got some FEMA colleagues behind me. Uh, we've got uh, local, state, federal officials. As you can see, as has been mentioned, this truly is uh, one team, one fight. So we're all here together to support the communities, both as we continue to respond as well as we begin the recovery. So thank you for everyone joining here today. I did have the opportunity today to survey some of the damage uh, caused by this devastating car wildfire. Uh, we saw in particular where the fire tornado uh, went through. You know, this is unprecedented. This, this tornado was two miles uh, long, half a mile wide. Uh, I understand it clocked in at about 143 miles per hour and about 2,700 degrees. This was a hot and fast moving storm of fire. Uh, so it shows us that as we continue to see the effects of weather, uh, the, the effects of climate and the environment, we need to continue to prepare for additional hazards. Uh, the scenes are truly heartbreaking. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, homes reduced to piles of ash, fences replaced uh, by caution tape, scorched vehicles in the driveways. Uh, it really looks like a scene, unfortunately, out of a devastating adventure movie. But for many families here in uh, this area of California and other parts of California, this is a reality. So I wanted to say my thoughts and prayers will continue to be with the victims, uh, with their families, uh, victims' families, and with the survivors. 
Uh, and certainly I want to thank, uh, as always, and take the opportunity to make sure I do so, to thank all the first responders here, firefighters, police alike, and all those uh, supporting the firefighting efforts from throughout the nation, uh, and as was mentioned, uh, from other nations as well. The past few weeks have been incredibly challenging, uh, both personally and professionally, uh, for some of the first responders. Uh, just to give you one example, uh, unfortunately this was certainly true for Tr Chief Moore, who I just had uh, some uh, time with to spend uh, talking to him uh, about what he personally experienced as his home uh, and that of his family was, was devastated. Uh, but as he is continuing uh, to survive this, he is continuing to go to work and continuing to support the community. And I think that is what I'm always uh, humbled by when I come to California to see how neighbors continue to help neighbors. Uh, it was amazing to see piles of ash where a house used to stand and within that, out of the ash, signs thanking first responders. Uh, the community clearly could not be more proud and more thankful of all the efforts uh, at firefighting response and recovery. So I want to uh, thank all of the, the folks here today. I want to thank the men and women of FEMA, our partners in California. Uh, and I wanted to just mention I met with Governor Brown yesterday. Uh, top of his agenda and mine are to find ways that we can better model uh, this type of a hazard and we can be, be even better prepared going forward. We really need to change all of our assistance programs so that we can get the assistance out ahead of uh, the hazard and disaster to help communities uh, be prepared and to mitigate. On Sunday, as was mentioned, President Trump approved a major disaster declaration for California, ordered federal assistance uh, to supplement state, tribal, and local recovery efforts. I want to thank him for taking that action in support of all those affected by the CAR fire. We at DHS and FEMA uh, will be here and continue to support our colleagues uh, and the men and women of the local area. While the full force of the federal government continues to support, I do want to spend just a few minutes talking about uh, what we can do uh, as citizens to prepare. It's truly not just a job reserved for someone who sits in a desk in a government building in D.C., uh, and it's not just the job of the brave men and women who respond every day when the hazards occur. So in times of disaster, whether it's a storm that has been gaining strength for weeks or a wildfire that began overnight, emergency alerts are truly the most valuable resource. So first I'd like to ask citizens, please do sign up for your community's warning system so that you're aware of the latest developments and notifications. For wildfires, as you know, early evacuation is key to protecting yourself and your family. Listen to local authorities, uh, follow their instructions about evacuations, but please don't wait until there's a mandatory uh, evacuation. Start thinking ahead of time how you're gonna get out of your neighborhood or town. What if the roads are blocked? What if trees are down? What if your car is out of gas? This is the type of question and answer that we can all do uh, as citizens to make sure we're prepared. So think about if you'll be relocating for an extended period of time, where will you stay? Uh, do you have family nearby? Would you uh, be accessing a shelter? And if so, do you know where they are? But beyond evacuating, it's important to consider how you'll communicate with your loved ones. Uh, we always all assume that our phones will work. Uh, sometimes they do. Sometimes there are so many of us trying to use the phone that there's congestion on the system. So please think ahead of time how you'll communicate with your family, how you'll find them, and where you'll meet. Create a plan. Uh, and this is the important part, practice. Once you have that plan, whether it's evacuation or how to communicate with your families, practice and make sure the muscle memory is there so that you all know what to do uh, in the time of a disaster. Keep extra water. Uh, you hear a lot about this, but it's important. Water, non-perishable food items, and a battery-powered radio. These can be uh, the difference between a life-saving act uh, and a truly difficult disaster. Make sure you have fire extinguishers in your home and that each family knows where they are and how to use them. Expect them periodically. I know I myself from time to time have to replace them. That's what you do. They don't last forever. Uh, make sure that they in fact are ready in case you need to use them. Also look at your insurance policy. I'm the first to say that insurance policies can be quite difficult uh, to understand, but now is the time to look at it, to understand it, ask the questions, know what's covered, uh, know what's not, and know where you will need additional assistance. You might consider photographing or videotaping uh, your belongings in your house so that you have a very good catalog of what you have uh, in case you need to know that during a disaster. And last but not least, spread the word. You know, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your coworkers about steps that they can take and you can take together to make sure that your communities and families are prepared. The task I know can, can seem intimidating. Uh, we at FEMA are here to help. 
I encourage everyone to visit uh, ready.gov to learn more. And certainly with respect to California, there are so many resources that the state and local communities provide. One is www.readyforwildfire.org. Uh, you will find some wonderful uh, resources there. You can also download the FEMA app. Uh, it has, among other things, a customizable checklist of emergency supplies, maps, uh, other things you would need. So I want to close by thanking all of the dedicated federal, state, and local first responders who are working very hard to help communities continue to respond and to begin recovery. And make no mistake, the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA will continue to support our partners throughout the response and recovery efforts. I encourage families around the nation to begin to prepare now for whatever the threat of tomorrow might be. Uh, and I want to thank the heroes who continue to respond as I stand here. I also want to thank the press who's here. You do play an extraordinarily important job, uh, important role when we have these types of disasters and getting the word out, uh, making sure that the communities understand uh, how the fire in this case is acting, where it's moving, what they need to do. So I thank you uh, for your role as well. And with that, I think we'd uh, like to take a few questions if there are any. Yes, sir. Uh, no, uh, they should not. Uh, we are here to help. Uh, we have various uh, programs, and there's, I believe there's even some instructions on the FEMA uh, website for just that occasion. So uh, this was a situation, unfortunately, we had last year as well, uh, and we worked through it. We'll always work through it to make sure people get the assistance that they need. Yes, sir. Uh, what they've told, actually, what we talked a lot about is how well uh, mutual aid works. Uh, it's quite an amazing system uh, that California really is a best in class. Uh, what we will do at the federal level in the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA is we will respond to uh, the local needs. What we try to do is not, uh, what we try to do is respond to them. So it's locally managed, and I think that's very important. So as they ask us for whatever it is they need, uh, we, in conjunction with our partners, will be there. Secretaries Purdue and Zinke are also coming out uh, early next week. As you know, at the federal uh, level, we have quite a few departments that are involved in this. So I think what's important is to understand the local needs and be able to make sure we're supporting and responding. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I, I, I might ask uh, Bob Fenton or, or Dan Kanuski if they have some figures. But I think, I think what this shows is, you know, we do do uh, fire uh, management assistance grants, uh, as you know. Uh, but the hazard mitigation program is interesting because the grant dollars are given after the hazard. Uh, and so what we're really working hard, and this was one of the things I talked to the governor about, is how do we change the way in which we provide assistance so that we can provide it on the front end, not during and after. During and after will always be important, but the more we can push the resources on the front end to help state and locals prepare, I think is the better way to save lives and property. But Bob or Dan, did you want to add anything to this particular area? So we do it, uh, as you know, we respond to the governor's request uh, when he asks for uh, disasters. Uh, depending on the type of assistance, the disaster request is usually by county. In this case, uh, Shasta County obviously uh, was granted uh, the declaration. But the fires uh, right now are separate. Uh, but Bob, did you want to speak any more just to the process? Yeah, we just finished uh, assessments down in uh, Lake. And, um, and taking that information, the governor made a request for uh, four fires, I believe, uh, in his request. Uh, the president came back the same day, made the request on uh, the most active fire that day with the most damage, which is the fire here in Shasta and Redding. Uh, we've just been able to get into the other fires and do those assessments. Uh, so we will uh, provide that information uh, for a uh, determination here on that. So we're still waiting. Yeah, we're in the process of, of pushing the information. In some areas, we still can't get in and see the extent. And we kind of, uh, we have to not only see the uh, damage extent, but also uh, be able to talk to the individuals, understand insurance, and those kind of things to see what the needs are. 
And actually, you know, that's uh, just to add, it's uh, something else we talked about earlier was uh, the, the help of the National Guard, uh, which I might not have mentioned earlier, California National Guard, through drones and, and other technology, we will be uh, able uh, to much more quickly assess damage, which I think will be very important to make sure that that assistance flows. Yes, sir. Yeah, so our assistance comes in three forms. Uh, first, individual assistance for uh, those who have, have uh, been impacted, uh, you know, homes destroyed, uh, primarily primary homeowners and renters uh, uninsured. Uh, and uh, we will provide assistance to them in the form of grants or rental assistance to help with repairs or uh, potential parts of, uh, to contribute to the cost for replacement of their home. Uh, in some cases, we may provide uh, Temporary housing in the form of travel trailers, mobile homes, depending on the rental stock available in the area. We're working with the state and local government to determine the best housing plan. Uh, plus, we'll contribute 75% uh, of the costs for all the debris removal, all the firefighting costs, uh, and uh, restoration of publicly owned infrastructure. 20% of all the costs that I just uh, spoke to will be put aside for mitigation to help uh, prevent um, damages like this in the future to build back stronger to make things more resilient uh, it may be uh, you know uh, increasing green space in areas that are have uh, urban interface those kind of things Uh, so right now uh, we are, uh, as people register, and I should say uh, if you need to register, uh, two ways to register, 1-800-621-FEMA, that's 1-800-621-3362. You can also go to disasterassistance.gov. I recommend you register first and then go visit the Disaster Recovery Center uh, at the Kmart on Hilltop uh, Drive at the address the sheriff gave. Um, as quick as you register, we will send inspectors out to the field. Most areas are accessible and our inspectors can uh, do inspections fairly quickly. Uh, once we do the inspection, uh, we turn around and provide assistance uh, in the form of rental assistance, if there's rental space available. Uh, if uh, there's not sufficient rental space, then we will look at bringing in mobile homes or travel trailers to the area if they can be put on someone's property or we have to find a place to put them. That can happen fairly quickly uh, as we have a number of units left over from last year's fires that are being made available to uh, move up in this area. Well, you know, the events in, in Sonoma and Napa really were the, the ultimate in catastrophic loss. I mean, the, the amount of debris we saw in, in that incident, um, we didn't see since probably the 1906 earthquake. So the, the, the scale and scope required some very significant actions. Uh, we went uh, and, and sought assistance from the federal government and, and brought in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to accelerate that process and, and try to meet the metrics that we had put in place for rapid cleanup. Uh, this case here is, uh, while uh, s certainly a, a number of homes still within the capabilities of the state, and um, the federal government will be supporting us in that effort, but uh, we will be using uh, state contractors and, and uh, state assets in this particular case to go in and, and, and do the debris clearance and, uh, and cleanup. And, um, and so that, that, that may be a little bit of a difference of people who used to see the Army Corps of Engineers before doing it. Now they're seeing the state of California. Generally, uh, the state has a lot of assets, and if we can do it under the state flag, then we will do that. And, and if we couldn't, then we would certainly turn to, the, to our federal partners. Um, they are supporting us with uh, funding and uh, other technical assistance as necessary through the process. And I, and I also may want to just do on a follow-up on the issue of housing. Um, you know, we are, we are uh, this is why it's so important to go into the, the, the local assistance center and get an assessment. Uh, there, you know, we've been working closely. There's really either your people who have had loss either have been in shelters or have been uh, into a, a hotel or motel or with friends. Um, uh, at this point, uh, we're constantly assessing for immediate needs of being able to address people who have that interim uh, sheltering need. Um, and as Bob mentioned, we've got already staged in Sacramento uh, and now looking for staging here a number of 
of uh, mobile home units and travel trailers that uh, are really immediately available. That's a, a huge step forward because typically that, that material either has to be procured or has to come from another state. And so we're, we, we're hoping that we're gonna leverage the, those assets in, in a very timely way once we get a, a good assessment of what people's needs are and what, what they're interested in doing, uh, that housing program will go into effect. Well, well, you know, we're, we, we're, we learned a lot. I mean, I think that on the debris side, um, you know, we really learned about the fact that um, the, the speed at which we could get the, the toxic materials cleared up and get started on the debris operation and the importance of making sure that the community is, is informed and, and, uh, and knowledgeable about how that process works is really a key lesson from, from last year, um, you know, because uh, it, it is a little bit of a daunting uh, a visual to have all this equipment show up on your property and understand what they're going to take and not going to take. And also making sure that the, that the public knows that we will give them time and even assistance as necessary to sift through their materials prior to any debris clearance being taken out. We want to make sure that, that any heirlooms or personal items or things that survive the fire, we can get those for, for, uh, for each individual before anything gets taken off. Well, it, uh, you know, typically on the travel trailers program, you know, they're not necessarily staged, but the way the program works is we can go, we're working with FEMA, we can go up and down the state um, and procure right off the lot um, travel trailers. So in essence, those trailers exist throughout the state. The larger mobile home units are staged in, I think, Texas and a few other states where FEMA has those. Bob, Bob can probably speak to that. And, um, and then we would need to bring those in. It just so happens we had some, some extra here from last year's fires, and it just gives us a, a step forward on those. Yeah, yeah. so undocumented uh, individuals should just uh, apply to the FEMA uh, registration number I gave you. You could go visit the Disaster Recovery Center and we'll walk you through not only the programs that FEMA has available, but other programs that you have available. And it may, it's gonna depend on your specific case, so it's best to go ahead and apply and then uh, work one-on-one -on -one with one of our case managers. There'll be more programs than FEMA that they'll, they'll be able to access though. Yeah, and let me be clear, um, uh, we, we have special, um, um, uh, especially trained individuals in the local assistance center. We've been working with non-governmental organizations throughout the, the area to be able to provide interface, Spanish speaking or other uh, language speakers. We're putting materials in different languages to ensure. We want people to feel comfortable enough to come in and, and, uh, and you know, you can start with me meeting with a state uh, personnel and, and or local begin to explain your situation and um, the programs that apply will apply. If, if they don't apply, we're working with uh, NGOs and other programs, uh, faith-based organizations to help those individuals. Like that, um, that actually will later, right? Yeah, you want to speak so to that? that yeah, there's, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I don't think there's, there's that, look, ICE is not in the, in the shelters. Um, and, uh, and we want to make sure that we, people understand that uh, that is not a place that, that we're going to be getting information out and, uh, and we're not going to be sharing that with, with those authorities. So, you know, the key thing is, is to come to the shelter and, and work with us on that. As we work with individuals uh, through the case management, uh, we will bring them. It's going to depend on whether they're existing lot has water, power, and sewer that's available to hook up, uh, whether it will fit on there, why they reconstruct. There's a lot of factors in that. Uh, the key is that we have uh, a little less than 100 mobile homes here, and as you heard Mark uh, say, that we could purchase travel trailers right off the lot, which is pretty quick. So what we need to do is, it starts with people registering. Register right now. It allows us to send an inspector out to understand your situation. Uh, we're gonna try to get you into rental assistance first, and, and uh, try to get you uh, uh, some help to get into some type of rental property. If that's not available, then we'll look at other options such as mobile homes or travel trailers. And real quick, you said 75% of the funding will provide Minimum 75%. Uh, it's a combination between state and local. The state of California matches uh, with local government uh, the 25%. I think you do it on the 75, 25% level. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Thank you. We do have quite a few information officers in the room for all of the detailed questions that I know you may still have. Just for some final closing comments, we do have Congressman LaMalfa. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> as, as a federal representative for this area, I'm very, very grateful for the immediate attention by Secretary Nielsen being with us here today in order to help through this crisis in the coming weeks as the fire is extinguished more and more. Indeed, we'll have that uh, coming to the surface, what people are going to need in order to uh, be restored to what will hopefully be a normal life, whether it's returning to where they were burned out or a new location, new opportunities. We know FEMA is going to be there. <clears throat> and we're establishing those ties now so that we, when we get those questions at my office and our FEMA or our other locals, we'll be able to all work together to get people quickly as possible back into their permanent homes, but with that temporary assistance they need. So I am indeed very grateful for when, as soon as our governor makes a declaration, ask, the administration has come through with uh, the emergency declarations. And so Secretary Nielsen being here today shows that dedication. And then this coming Monday to the gentleman's question about water and forest management, yes, they are tied together with uh, unmanaged forests use much more water that does not get to our waterways. But that's going to be when Secretary uh, uh, Purdue and Zinke are here. We'll be talking about that and what we're doing in the future. So with that, I'm very grateful again to those secretaries coming this week and the attention that's being paid to rural California and these issues and these challenges that we have that um, the administration is showing. So. I'm very proud of how this community has come together, right down to people helping feed each other and uh, clothe each other. It really shows how, what a tight-knit place we have and a special place here in Northern California. So thank you. Thank you. That concludes the press conference. Thank you for your time.